Hey guys, how's it going? This is Billy Eat World, and today we're taking a look at the XM25 Airburst. Now, I don't often play support, and I rarely use this weapon, and until recently, I didn't really know how to use it properly. But after playing with it for quite some time now, I've actually recently discovered that it's a lot more useful than I first thought. If you haven't already tried out this weapon, basically the XM25 is a launcher available to the support kit. It's capable of firing a variety of different rounds, including shotgun rounds, smoke rounds, and airburst rounds. We're only going to take a look at the airburst round today, but if you'd like me to take a look at the other two different rounds in a future video, then feel free to let me know. So basically, at first glance, the XM25 seems a bit like a semi-automatic grenade launcher, but it's actually a lot more advanced than that. The first thing that'll stand out is the fact that it has an infrared night vision scope. This will pop out enemies in bright white up to about 50 or 60 meters, but as a trade-off, it'll cut down your field of view. The real feature that makes this gun unique though is its airburst round. The XM25 airburst round is designed to take out enemies behind cover, and the way that it does this is by detonating at a predetermined range. You're able to lock in a range with the XM25 and the round will explode exactly three meters behind this. To lock in this value, from the hipfire position, you'll first need to aim the top white line of the crosshair at the target. When you zoom into ADS, you'll see that the range has now been locked in. The value on the right hand side of the XM25 scope is the actual range to target, and the value on the left is the range at which the round will detonate. If you use either of the other lines to line up your target, you'll see that it won't lock in the range. You have to make sure that you use that top line if you want it to work correctly. Now once you've locked in the range, it'll hold that value for as long as you aim down sights. And once you're ready to fire, you can aim above the target and the splash damage should kill anything hiding behind it. Between two and four good hits should be enough to take out most enemies. But like any splash damage weapons, the damage dealt really depends on how far away the target is from the point of impact. You can see in this next clip, I'm aiming at each wall to lock in the range each time. And my shots are all detonating exactly where I want them to. You'll notice that even if I haven't locked in a range, I can still fire this weapon from the hip and the round is detonating on impact. This means that if you really need to, you can use this weapon a bit like a noob tube. Now, just be aware that as this gun is firing a fairly large round, it's actually got a very slow muzzle velocity and a fairly significant bullet drop. And as you can see, I can still lock in a range from this far away, but I've just got to take into account that bullet drop when I fire. Even though in these shots I was aiming a fair bit higher than the wall, the shots still didn't quite make it over. This is something that you're just going to have to get used to. Here's what the travel time and bullet drop looks like from about 180 metres away. It's pretty safe to say that you won't be hitting many moving targets at long range with this gun. Now because this weapon is firing an explosive round, you can use it like a noob tube and take out walls. Obviously light cover is going to be much less of an issue, but as you can see, this concrete wall just takes a few more shots. You can even use it to strategically take out towers and turrets. The XM25 also does damage to vehicles, and as you can see, it makes pretty short work of this quad bike and this jeep. Helicopters are also not that hard to take out with an XM25 either, assuming of course that you can actually hit them. Boats are not so easy to kill, but you could probably kill a rib if you really needed to. Tanks and attack boats though are just too heavily armoured, and although the XM25 does damage them a little, you don't stand much of a chance taking one out on your own.
But anyway, to wrap up this review, I hope this helps you guys to better understand the XM25, and I hope now that you understand how to use it and what it's capable of. It really is one of the more unique weapons in Battlefield 4, so if you haven't already taken the time to learn how to use it yet, then jump in and give it a go. Hopefully you'll also find it useful, and I'm sure that you'll have a lot of fun with it. But anyway guys, that just about wraps it up, and as always, if you like what you see, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, please check out all my other Battlefield 4 videos, I've got them all linked in a playlist in the description below. And don't forget, if you have any suggestions for weapons or loadouts that you'd like me to take a look at in future episodes on this channel, then feel free to let me know in the comments of this video, or send me a tweet on Twitter at BillyEatWorld. But anyway guys, until next time, see you later, and have a good one.